back, sports fans. We are ready for round three here at the Canadian National Championship at the Sheridan Centre in Toronto on a lovely Friday afternoon. I am your host for Day 1A, Timbo Slice, and I am joined for my guest for round three, all the way from London, Ontario, Mr. Scott Ross. How are you doing, Scott? I'm doing great. It's good to be here. Thank you very much, Tim. Scott, we're going to jump right into turn zero here. So we've got rock placement going uh, from Tristan's side of the board diagonally cover the middle. Both of them have been extremely cautious at keeping the gaps as close as possible. I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that they both have highly formation-based uh, lists to go. Um, no, just to clarify, that's definitely not Dash, so he's not getting on rocks. <laughs> One rock left to go, and it looks like it's Tristan's, which would mean that Lucas has initiative. Right, and each time you see either of these players on stream, they like a lot of room. You'll find one corner of the map wide open, maybe half the map. Uh, got pretty good history about that. Well, Tristan's lifts is highly based on um, the initial alpha strike engagement and how um, efficiently he can affect that. So he doesn't want rocks in play to grant extra dies to mitigate damage. Yeah. Particularly if he's got Justero in the in the fight there, right? That's right. This list this list uh, looks awfully familiar from Mr. Singleton. Wouldn't you say it has a, an air of familiarity about it? It's probably because the internet is still saturated with love for it from last <laughs> weekend. <laughs> um, Tristan, of course, to our viewers uh, on the right-hand side, our player uh, is the, um, the the gentleman that brought home the championship from the Michigan X-Wing Regional Championship last weekend in Canton, Michigan. Uh, back home to Canada across the border. He is um, a great player with a great list. And we're going to talk a little bit more about it just after the turn zero is done here, Scott. So Lucas has all PS2s, all of them. And um, he's going to place them down all first. He's just deciding about his approach vector here. So my guess is if you look at uh, the rocks from the top right-hand corner of your screen, folks, going towards the middle, I would say those two rocks look like a good approach vector. He's got an approach vector possibly from his bottom right-hand corner to up through the middle. He could go up uh, the right side of the board, curve left. He's got all the options in the world, really, and he's just deciding on where it is. Now, just to remind folks um, about the importance of turn zero, Lucas has won many games on the back of turn zero, mainly from his, uh, <clears throat> his time on Vassal. Vassal yeah. turn zero is incredibly important because of how many Vassal games don't usually get finished. You just start a game and you don't finish it because you win or lose. That's right. You end up uh, also, I mean, taking a look at the way the Lucas is sizing up this board now that the rocks are down, uh, he's clearly figured out his approach vectors and what his options are at 30, and 30, 50, and if you would, 60% of the way across the top of the screen left to right. Uh, he knows how he's going to want to come in. I know Tristan hasn't set up, but he is definitely taking into account the amount of flexibility he wants out of his list. Well, Lucas definitely doesn't want to uh, get get two Zs offered up for nothing here. Right. Both of the players being provided their custom alt art cards for participation prizes in our Canadian Nationals. We have uh, an alternate art uh, advanced optics provided by the Prototype Toronto League. And we... Uh, also have a alt art uh, Palpatine, which of course has hmm. Queen Elizabeth the, se the second on it. Yeah, I just our beloved uh, head of state. Just got a peek of that today. That's this quite a stunning piece of cardstock there. I like that. And uh, also, each time I watch a match on stream, I never get tired of seeing that uh, Coruscant damage deck that Tristan has sitting in front of him. Uh, those are pretty sharp, uh, pretty sharp cards stacked up there. So now I didn't get to go to Coruscant, but uh, weren't you there, Tim? I was at Naboo. Yeah, was um, it Naboo they well, handed that out? The Coruscant's or? basically like the uh, the the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. It's ah, um, okay. It's the Invitational where all the System Open Series okay. uh, winners and, and, and finalists get added. So, right. so um, I'm just going to ask our producer Travis to pull in Lucas Crosby's list uh, when it's ready, and we'll talk about what Lucas is running. So he's brought. Four Z95s, which is why he's debating so much about his um, loadout right now as far as mm. where he's going to actually put the ships. Um, it might seem silly to have the two Z95s bumping each other like that, but what he's really trying to do is he's trying to make Tristan's um, ordnance damage list come to him. Right. 
pull him through those rocks or and then reposition and make Tristan think. Maybe uh, Tristan's going to have to change his vector when he's, say, halfway through those rocks. Uh, those bandits are uh, loaded pretty good with the thread tracers, and if, uh, if, if people have been watching the streams over the past month, you uh, will know that thread tracer can trigger harpoon missiles. So, <clears throat> currently, Lucas has got his guys set up the block if he wants to uh, take those maneuvers and um, wait Tristan out to see where he's coming in. I mean, Lucas could wait till Tristan is easily 50% easily across the board, redeploy. He's got two flight groups there. So really, Lucas is playing the waiting game. That wild space fringer, I wouldn't be surprised if he's uh, going to be running around causing problems. For a moment there, I thought we were going to see a wild space fringer with Bistan on it because there's an awful lot of uh, love for Bistan or dirty Bistan on the uh, interwebs these dirty, days. Dirty, dirty Bistan. <laughs> All right, chat. Vote one if you believe it's pronounced fringer and vote two if you believe it's pronounced fringer. We'll see how that goes by the end of the game. Oh, here Lucas we go. still deciding on his approach vectors. Yeah. He definitely wants to keep two Zs out of the fight in the yeah. in the his left corner. He's got to come up with uh, a, a good way to go about this. We went live a little bit earlier than we're normally used to in, in matches, folks, because I know how absolutely crucial this turn zero setup is going to be for both Very players. So. Both of them have a type of list where if things don't go well for them into the mid game, it's going to be really hard for them to turn it around in the late game. So it, I'm getting the impression here that with these Zs or these Zs uh, up here in Canada. We're Canada, a, it's a Z, uh, yeah. It looks like Lucas has is, Lucas is practiced with a couple of different uh, deployment formations here. Uh, so right off the bat, you've got, as I mentioned, the two flights. Uh, each flight has uh, one Z with harpoon and chips and another Z with thread tracers and chips. Awful lot of versatility there. <clears throat> Excuse me. Awful lot of versatility there. But... Uh, yeah, I'm getting the feeling here that Lucas, he's he's got a couple of tricks up his sleeve depending on what type of list he's facing. Um, and uh, he's used to maybe two or three different patterns for those two little flight groups. As you got to love Zeds. you got to love the Zeds, man. As a reminder to our listeners as well and our viewers, Lucas has very graciously uh, arranged it so that the Z95s that are on two pegs, being the tall Z95s, are the ones with the harpoon missiles. And the short stuff guys are the ones with the thread tracers. So Lucas is deciding that, that castling against uh, Tristan's list mm. is a good strategy. I can't say I disagree with him at oh, this point. Not when Tristan has the capabilities to delete two, if not three, if things went well, well for him, uh, Z95s in a turn. So he's going to make Tristan make the tough choices. And I and love you can this deployment. definitely see this lovely that. approach vector. Oh, set up. Yeah. That, that net is huge. Yeah, it's a He's really covering wide the entire net. side of the board, it. and uh, Tristan's going to have to decide, you know, which edge or uh, which horn of the bull he wants to take on first. I don't know how that's going to turn out for him, but uh, here we are. A heartfelt hello from the cold white north to the Carolina crates, chiming in on the Twitch chat. I would also request our producer, Travis, and no offense to the folks in the Twitch chat, yeah, Travis, if you wouldn't mind making sure that the YouTube chat is on the screen for this one, if possible. Uh, our co-caster, Scott, here tells me that uh, we're very lucky to have uh, some focus. I'm just going to let the judge call happen here, folks. We're doing a social at Quinn's after Swiss. Quinn's is in the building to the south on Richmond. And time has begun. A little pre-St. Uh, Patrick's get-together uh, uh, over at Quinn's, I kind of like that idea. Well, let's all go out and drink till we oh. can't feel feelings. Oh, it sounds grand, yeah. <laughs> so we got uh, Tristan's list up on the screen there. Yeah, we're going to try and get the um, the YouTube chat up just because, Scott, thank you very much for reminding me before the match starts, but it would appear as if uh, some of our friends from, from far away in the... In the uh, the land of China are actually chiming in to, to watch our match today, and there's some friends, some work friends of yours, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah, some associates of mine over there that uh, work at my employer's facility just out of Shanghai. They're uh, going to be uh, getting the old VPN working and uh, spooling into YouTube. So hashtag I'm Black Market X Wing. <laughs> they, uh, actually, there's quite a devout following in Beijing and Shanghai. Uh, when I've uh, flown over there, I've been able to arrange some matches. Uh, just using the uh, community chat uh, page on FFG. So, well, so Nehao, 
Yeah. And, uh, and, and welcome to uh, our viewers from across the Pacific, if you're chiming in today. Ni hao, zhao shang hao. I was just saying hello, good morning over yes, there, because exactly. it's very early over morning over there oh, right God, now. Yeah, it's probably We're looking at 2 a.m. in uh, China right now. So. Okay. Yeah. Well, turn zero looks complete. Looks like Tristan's decided that he's going to go for the uh, the jousting vector on the far side. And um, hey, somebody's kid is chiming in here an awful lot on the uh, YouTube chat. What's going on there? Is this <laughs> Sam Ro uh, Ross? Yeah, is it's it? some. I don't know. I've never seen that name before. Isn't he that kid that you beat at like some store championship? Oh no, he's <laughs> poor guy. Takes his kid to a treasure, beats him. Look at that! Look at him. Never gonna live that down. Well, Sam wiped the uh, floor with me over at Flint's there a couple of well, but a month ago when we met up with the Grand River Grand River X Wing League. That's Tristan and and his motley crew up there. Sam finished six, but he definitely wiped the floor with me, and it was uh, an honor to play him. It always is. He knows his stuff. Okay, so Lucas Castling with one forwards each on the Zs, and it looks like one of them is going to break formation on first turn. Excellent. Look at that. Lucas saying, I wasn't going to stay here forever. I came to play. I like it. I like it. Thank you very much, Travis, for getting that up for us. We're going to uh, keep an eye on the YouTube chat as well, folks. Thanks for joining us. Looks like we have a couple of people joining in from Germany there. So welcome, I believe uh, Ryan, maybe a couple other folks yes. on the YouTube uh, chat. Good Thanks to, for joining us good today. Good to Naben, good to mm -hmm. because it's uh, it's evening time there. You think they'll morning. celebrate St. Patrick's Day in uh, in Germany? I mean, it's another reason to raise a pint. Everybody's a bit Irish this oh, week. There we go. Yes, <laughs> except the Scottish. The Except Scottish, the Scottish, yeah, Scottish, Scottish like yeah. Yeah. Everybody's uh, everybody's Irish unless you're English, because tomorrow <laughs> England plays Ireland in rugby. For the, for the Six Nations final in England. It's there be great. we go. There we go. Okay, so Tristan pulling his three straight. Turn one shaping up a lot the way we expected it to, Ross. We've got the two Zs breaking formation to create that wide net. We discussed it with the beautiful approach vectors up through the middle. That's right. Both these players know exactly what's going to be going down over the next two turns. So let's get right into talking about them. Um, Tristan is from your part of the... Um, the uh, the province. So why don't you start talking a little bit about Tristan yeah. and what he was saying about his his uh, chances going into this match. Well, yeah. So Tristan is uh, actually he's, he's the midpoint between us. So uh, he's the the neutral zone. But uh, yeah, the Grand River uh, X Wing League up there. I have to caution you. I'm sorry, Scott. <laughs> there are no Star Trek references allowed on this stream. <laughs> I well, okay. The, the green zone that's Cyprus. But anyway, uh, uh, going over to Tristan's list here, we're seeing uh, first of all a breakout deployment. Uh, he's very comfortable with this. We we saw it a couple of times uh, during Michigan. Uh, regionals last weekend? Yeah, that was last weekend. And uh, Tristan's list here, we've got our Captain Nim. Uh, wonderful combination on here because you'll notice a distinct absence of a particular upgrade. Yeah. Yeah, there's something missing off that. What do What's, you see there, Tim? Wait. What, what don't you see what, there? Wait. You mean that's a Nim that has to shoot out of his arc? Yeah, he's playing, it uh, looks like uh, Tristan's list is going to be running with arcs. Hashtag arcs only. Arcs only. <laughs> this is an arcs only match, folks. <laughs> there are no turrets. Oh, hang on a second. Wild Space Ranger? He's got a mangler cannon. Uh, does he that count? A, that counts. <laughs> All right. He's going to want to shoot it, isn't he? <laughs> so the guys are doing their dials. And so we got Captain Nim here with Veteran Instincts. So running at 10. Uh, he does like to have Nim and Tarani Kolda at 10. Uh, I remember that. But uh, harpoon missiles, extra munitions, thermal detonators, got to love that bomb. Trajectory simulator, so he's going to be chucking bombs. Genius, so genius and trajectory simulator. So that was recently FAQ'd, and I'll say recently because it was the most recent one. Yeah, recent. Yeah, and, recent. Uh, you know, you treat your genius just like you have uh, an extra munitions token on it with that. And uh, guidance chips and havoc. Uh, Nim, a very popular choice here today. Uh, when I walked in here earlier, before I think you were wrapping up what round two there. This is round uh, three. Yeah, so we were observing an awful lot of Nims on the tables here. So uh, then we have Tarani Kolda, 32 points, pilot skill 10. Uh, Tarani is running with veteran instincts, harpoon missiles, and guidance chips. Uh, now she's carrying around the bullseye arc and the ability to reload. And yeah, that is huge. The, the, sorry, the Camigula fighter's ability to reload it just really can't be understated as far as a, uh, a benefit for Tristan in this list, really. And, yeah. and you know, let's just take a quick second uh, as a new mechanic. The bullseye firing arc is a secondary firing arc that comes out of the middle of the small base ship. 
in a forward um, parallel direction. And it is a special new mechanic introduced in the X-Wing, and it reads, when attacking, if the defender is inside your bullseye firing arc, the defender cannot spend focus tokens to modify defense dice or evade tokens to add an evade result. And Tarani's pilot skill, a pilot ability, I should say, says, after I shoot at PS10, if you are in my bullseye firing arc, you either need to spend all your tokens or take a damage. And, and we are going to play with the FAQ clarification right. that uh, it, you are allowed to spend less, so you're allowed to spend no tokens. That's right. Just like the, uh, it's, it's uh, I heard somebody describe it as a soft hot shot. It uh, is like upgrade, a soft hot if shot, if you will. Yeah, that's a good way of putting so, it. So, uh, <clears throat> and uh, you know, if you've seen Tristan fly the Kimo Gila fighter before, you will realize that he is not shy of uh, flying that off to the side just to take a reload. He's not afraid to uh, do a maneuver you would not expect, but he is okay with taking off 90 degrees to the conflict, reloading, and letting the rest of the team carry the load. And the next thing you know, he's coming in on your flank or on your seven, and there's a harpoon waiting for you. So it's a good thing to watch here. Hopefully he pulls it off again, and uh, it's a pretty good tactic to have in your back pocket. I would agree. And patience pays, that's for sure. A quick shout out to Nathan Horgan, chiming in from Indiana, originally from the Emerald Isle. A top of the afternoon to you, and a happy St. Patrick's Day weekend. Um, Lucas continuing to cast that wide net with the Harpoon Z coming along the bottom there. Yeah. Let's take a little bit of time and just talk about our two players here. So uh, we know that Tristan is um, the, re the Michigan uh, regional finalist from last week, mm -hmm. originally from Cambridge, Ontario. Plays out of the Flint's Games in Kitchener, mm -hmm. uh, one of the proponents, uh, one of the proprietors of the Grand River X-Wing uh, community out there. GRX. Great group of people. Great group of guys. Um, talk to him before the game about what his strengths are going into the match, what his weaknesses are against the match, and he he told me that the pilot skill and trajectory simulator bombs are either going to win this game for him or not. He feels that if he can go in and, and delete one or two Z's that he'll have a chance. Ironically yeah. enough, um, Lucas thought something similar. Um, Tristan, of course, is just asked me to give a quick shout out to anybody in the Kitchener, Cambridge, Waterloo, Guelph area um, to keep in mind that the GRX, the Grand River X-Wing League, starts up next week and they're doing a special mixed format this year. So feel free to uh, find their information on Facebook and, uh, and get in touch with them. Now, Scott, do you know much about uh, Lucas Crosby? Have you met him before? Have you talked to him before? I've met him, but uh, I believe because he's a member of the PTL, there's a little bit of distance between us, so uh, I only get to really cross paths with him when we come up here, and uh, we need to get up here more often. <laughs> but anyway. Hopefully uh, hopefully things work out for you. Move back to the 416, brother. That'd be awesome. Okay, well, Lucas Crosby is a member of the Prototype Toronto League, but we love to say that his home store is actually Vassal. He is one of the best Vassal players you'll meet. Uh, very long time that. player. Yeah. He just got relegated out of the deep core uh, this year, which is the most competitive uh, set subset in um, in Vassal. So he's in the inner core, and he he brought this amazingly janky list. Hilariously enough, Lucas could not ask for a worse opponent, not because of Tristan's list, but because Tristan knows what running this many Z's is like. Mm -hmm. He knows what a list with this type of widespread our capabilities has. He's done it himself before. And one of the things that Lucas always uh, has going for him as an advantage when he's going through a tournament is that his opponent probably doesn't have many practice reps against four Zs and a Fringer. Well, yeah, a Fringer uh, castling that many uh, health points or hit points there as well. Uh, and also, uh, you know, Tristan is not running turrets. As, so Tristan loves the arc. I mean, the guy will dance in those two lines of the arc, as much as you let him. Uh, look at what he did with Canadian Regionals. Uh, he showed up with four Ys, BTL, flight assist, uh, twin laser turret on each one. He's in a position where he's just going to be okay with taking his time, lining up his arc. And don't forget, Tristan does have a substantial net there. He does have some good flexibility. He's got a lot of map to work with, yeah. Nim keeps barrel rolling. He's not afraid of that. Uh, and he's a very patient player. So uh, sometimes he'll wear you down by just, uh, you know, making you move across the board to chase him and catch up with him. So. Well, I spoke to Lucas, and he says that he, he, he's going for, uh, hilariously, a, a lot of the things that Tristan is. So Lucas is worried that 
Christian will just delete two Zs before they even get a chance to shoot, which yeah. is a fair call. Yeah. But Lucas is still pretty confident that if he can take the Fringer and either one or two Zs into the late game against one of those three ships, mm -hmm. that he'll have a chance. Yeah, he's going to have to weather that initial storm. And uh, I you asked know, him about target priority, but he said it's all gonna it's all gonna depend on the match. And here, I don't know what his target priority would be thinking. I mean, Nim is the obvious uh, dream, but whether or not Nim will give you himself is another question. So, well, what I see Lucas setting up right here is a hammer and anvil, and uh, he's baiting Tristan with those two Zeds in the top left hand corner. Uh, I don't think Tristan, Tristan's going to go for it, but Tristan's going to find himself in a tough position because if he does start banking to port, so coming down towards the bottom of the screen, those Zeds in the top left-hand corner, number two and four, they are going to break formation and come right at him. And uh, if you're Justero or Tarani, you do not want a couple of Zeds on your starboard side shooting harpoons and primaries into you and, and of course, then activating the, the crate off the harpoon condition. So... Uh, and that Fringer, uh, I don't think he's going to stick with three and five for very long. Uh, that's Z number three and number five. That Fringer, I bet you he could easily just pop up one barrel, roll south, and come around in behind Nim and Tarani. Um, he's not afraid to use that uh, Mangler cannon to full effect. Well, looks like your son uh, Sam's uh, cheering for Tristan there, Scott. Oh, there we go. Look at that. Lots of love for the GRX in the chat today, folks. Yeah. Thanks for uh, for chiming in. Well, Tristan's the type of guy where he'll spend some time with Sam, teach him a few things and whatnot, and uh, also they seem to have quite a, a camaraderie going wherever they meet up at the tournaments, too. So, you guys you know, got a lot of talented to players Tristan. to learn from out there your way. Yourself included from the London area. I know... Um, Old dog, new tricks. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> and Ferguson's from London, or is he from K KW as well? Uh, you know what? I, I think he is from the uh, KW area. Okay. I, I, I think so, yeah. But we we so, see them in both cities frequently, so it's kind of hard to pin that down. So for our viewers from other parts of Canada or international, KW is a, a large city just outside of Toronto called Kitchener, Waterloo. Originally formed, founded as New Berlin, Ontario. Best uh, best Oktoberfest outside of Germany, if you ask yeah. us. I think they changed that in, what, 1919? They changed the name of that? So. Something like that, yeah. <clears throat> so, But, you know, we didn't uh, give Captain Justero any love. We didn't. We He's didn't. actually like the best thing ever in this entire thing. Who brings a Kirax fighter, honestly? Well, you don't see it very often, but uh, with Captain Justero, uh, to be honest with you, I think I'd have to pull up the card. I don't think I can recite his ability word his for pilot word. Ability? Oh, I can recite yeah. it. Oh, okay. Well, ship. I'm going to leave this one to Tim. Then. So Captain Justero uh, is a, a vessel with a pilot ability that says this. If you take damage from something that doesn't involve an attack, I get to shoot. So I get one bonus attack per turn off of lots of different stuff. And That's the right. synergy in Tristan's list is amazing because it, it, so many different things can spawn Justero's ability. If my opponent ends up on a rock, if I take damage from a bomb, if I take splash damage from a harpoon, not the actual ship that got harpooned because that's still a defender, um, but any ship around it who takes bonus yeah, damage from a harpoon. Right, uh, right. If I take damage from Tarani's bullseye, a firing arc yeah. ability, instead of skipping. So basically, I have to get rid of all my tokens. Oh, yeah. Or I give Justero a free shot. Yeah. And we saw a little bit of that happen in Michigan last weekend. Sure did. Yeah. Caught a lot of people off guard with that. In fact, I remember <laughs> Tristan playing one poor Kylo guy who's like, I need to read this card again because yeah. this bullseye firing arc cannot be that good. And well, he's PS10. <laughs> So he keeps catching all of these aces in arc on his bullseye. It's like, yeah, you can't spend your tokens, bro. <laughs> and, and and pretty much you see people get that uh, that trauma come back to them of the, the glory of the core and horn days. And they're like, what do you mean you get to attack again? You, mean? <laughs> Hang on. you just hit me. You're going to hit me again? What? You're allowed to attack and, twice. And you get to shoot again next turn. Yeah. And you can do that. So basically, Justero, if you play your cards right, will get two attacks per turn. There's no weapons disabled token he receives. He just keeps rolling into your squadron. Well, especially with Trajectory Simulator, being able to throw those bombs around. Um, you know, Tristan threw this list on the table last week. It got some publicity, and, and three other people have shown up with it today, yeah. including Donnie Kay. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it's it's definitely got its bad matchups. Oh, here and, we go. Um, and, and Tristan ran into one of those bad matchups last weekend, which was Marcel... Uh, from Gold Squadron. That's right. Which was an absolute pleasure the three to, to watch. It was such a great oh, game. Oh, oh, oh. Um, he managed to squeak it out, but yeah, just by the skin of his teeth. 
So okay, it looks so Luke like, is uh, zooming up there with the. We're yeah. trying to get one of the harpoon Z's behind the formation. Looks like he's trying to establish a target lock. Yeah. Lucas just leisurely throwing the uh, the 2014 Nationals uh, target locks <laughs> down in there. He's, he's just been, never played a game of X-wing in his life. So what we do see is Lucas is starting to cast that net, and uh, he probably is just going to keep it nice and slow. So here we go again. Okay, so he's going to keep it nice and slow, and three and one, so Z number three and the Fringer. Uh, so number one, they're going to anchor the center most likely, and he's going to create a nice big crescent, and he's going to just drive Tristan crazy trying to figure out target priority here. Yeah, target priority is going to be a big problem for Lucas in this game. Um, he's going to need to figure it out way ahead of time and try and range control it to control that. Otherwise, he's going to be in big trouble. Yeah, so okay, well, while this activation phase is going here, let's uh, let's just reiterate a few things for, for housekeeping. So both of our players are 2-0 and going into round two of the tournament. Um, Lucas definitely has initiative. There we he know is. that because he put the first rock down. Um, as a reminder to our viewers, we are round three here of the six rounds of Swiss on day 1A of Canadian Nationals, which is two rounds, sorry, two days of six rounds of Swiss, followed by a day two, which is two rounds of progressive cut Swiss, followed by a top eight. We I almost have, uh, envy the people playing today because anybody who finishes in that top tier today gets a day off and gets to play Sunday, so they get a chance to recharge. Well, I play tomorrow, same as you. It's hardly a day off, though. It is St. Patrick's Day tomorrow, <laughs> so I don't know what anybody's going to be like playing on Sunday. Yeah. We're going to see how that all works out. Yeah, we'll see how we're all looking then. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Man, I, I can't even stress, if, if Tristan gets one of his one agility ships out of position in this and Lucas lands a tracer missile on one of them, oh, yeah. it could go. It, it could get out of hand fast. This, this really escalated quickly. So we'll have to see if Tristan does keep that formation nice and tight or if he starts breaking it up. You know, does he take Nim a little bit south, barrel roll out to maybe take on number three by himself, nuke it fast? Uh, does Tarani stick with uh, Justero? This is, this is good. For me, I think this is the make or break uh, movement for Tristan right now. So he did oh. a leisurely one bank, which means he's probably, oh. So if, he's got something lined. If, he's if be. Z95 number five mm -hmm. has got a tracer range, it's going to be very interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you can't give any of those bandits uh, dead eyes, so they still have to go for a target lock. So remember the, the they're sequence just, they're of They're just banditos, yeah. Yeah, so right now we're, we're not seeing any target locks on Tristan, so he doesn't have to eat any harpoons right away. But next turn could be a totally different story. Totally different story. So the bullseye firing arc is a fantastic mechanic against big base ships because it's so easy to hit. But it'll be interesting to see if uh, Tristan banked it, trust, trying for a target lock. No way, no how. He's just checking some range information. Now, if I remember correctly, Tim, that bullseye firing arc goes the entire length of the range finding ruler. Correct. So if Tarani came in and did a two, he might get a bullseye arc immediately on the fringer. Yeah, it's gonna yeah. be close. I mean, I don't even. Nim's probably definitely in range. Oh yeah. yeah. So the harpoons are on the on the on the outside flanks. The tracers are on the inside, and the fringers in the middle. It's just an absolute masterful yeah. formation by uh, by Lucas. And still, you know, you're gonna to have to do ten damage to that fringer. That's a five and five. Yeah, ten damage so. with two agility as a as defense. It's not easy. Yeah. Yeah. It would require a good amount of your harpoon missiles. I don't know, maybe Lucas should have brought uh, Bistan. Maybe that's the key to the whole match, is putting Bistan on your Fringer. No, just it is, kidding. Bistan just kidding. is the just key kidding. to victory, folks. You heard it here first. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> All right, Nim taking the target lock on the Fringer. There we go. Okay, so let's see if he did the magical. Oh, he did a one. No, he's probably out okay. of range there. Yeah. Now, what I noticed, too, is about that bullseye arc is, uh, number one, it's underestimated. Number two, hardly gets any love. But if you watch Tristan's matches from uh, from regionals in Michigan last weekend, holy Toledo, did you see a lot of bullseye firing arcs going off that you didn't even suspect. Pretty much we would look at the shooting phase at that point and realize, holy cow, he's got a bullseye firing arc on one or two ships. Where did that come from? What? what, 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 what? No, it's, it's, <laughs> it's the one thing I saw about the Camigula when, when they made it. I was like... Oh, it's going to be so hard to pull, oh, that, I know, pull right? that off all yeah. the time. Yeah. And then I see more and more of them nowadays, and I'm like, yeah, that's not that hard. <laughs> Especially a big base ship, like a Saj. 
Oh, my God. Sergeant ate one of those arcs. Oh, my yeah. gosh. Yeah. It's funny. We've probably got a few people who are planning on playing tomorrow, and now they're like, well, shit. I thought I was going to bring this, and now we're going to bring that. <laughs> yeah, so people who are watching the stream today, they might be uh, up till the, the wee hours in the morning, maybe with a pint, uh, thinking about how to craft their list a little sharper for tomorrow, huh? You know, where half you, of Tristan's, half of Lucas's. I made dinner. <laughs> uh, no worries. I, I'm just running to the game store. I'll be back shortly. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I need a couple of things last minute, you know? That guy knocking on the glass at 9.01 p.m. <laughs> Okay, what do we got going on here? Oh, okay. So, do you remember? Oh yeah. By the way, that ship has barrel roll. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I forgot about that. Did Did you remember what the range was from Nim to the Fringer? It is range three. He's got the target locked there. But does that mean that uh, Tarani just came into range by doing that bullseye? No, I think Tarani still. Did she go? Did, actually, she might have moved herself Nim, out of. Out of Nim's going to spend his EM token here and take a, uh, a harpoon missile shot. Yeah. Here we go. Now Tristan's red dice are always hot. Did I just curse What were you him? saying? Did I just curse him? Oh no. Tristan, if you're watching this later, I'm sorry. He's gonna re-roll <laughs> all of that. Do we have a dice cam here? Oh. Okay, we're gonna guidance chip one to right. right. Hit hit okay. on the fringer. Not too bad. Alright, so we got two shield damage and the harpoon condition being applied. Oh there we go. We're going to get the Harpoon Condition card up to remind our viewers in just one second, but I'm sure most of us are pretty well versed on it at this point. Yeah, it's time to see if Tarani's got any range to anybody. Doesn't look like he's got range to the fringe. Just think that's out like by, uh, oh, 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 hang on. I don't know. I don't know if that was really out to the fringer, was it? No, maybe it was. From Nim. Yeah, we've got no obstruction there. So we've got a range three, and it looks like unobstructed, closest location, the closest location on each ship. I don't know, they might call for a judge on this. But. Yeah, it looks just obstructed, but uh, it would be great uh -huh. if the Z got the obstruction here. Boy, that yeah, it's just on the edge of that rock. Toy, like a toy gun. There's one thing about those Zs, no you might look at them and oh, say, okay. two shields, two hull, okay, these Zs aren't really worth uh, taking to the game, but uh, trust me, with two agility, those things have a lot more su survivability than you give so them. So Lucas more. has just taken advantage of a, a new zero-point EPT uh, that has just been introduced to the game, only thematically relevant for this weekend. Uh, it, it says very simply, once per turn, uh, just roll natties. Yeah. It's, it's easier than doing some other things. That's right. And that's all you got to do, folks. Now, uh, I think you can only get that when you come to Canadian Nationals, right? That's the only way you can get that card. So uh, do you think that the next expedition into the U.S. might uh, find an entire party bus full of uh, rolling natty cards? Uh, no, there's no? going to be some custom collectibles for the world's <laughs> bus, but it isn't going to be it isn't going to be that particular EBT. Yeah, maybe FFG HQ won't uh, smile benevolently on the I, I really don't card. care what those jokers do at this point. They made it so bloody hard for me to put a bloody tour together. Yeah, no kidding, eh? Okay. I'm waiting for my ticket on uh, March 31st. <laughs> yeah, a lot of us are. Did you get in? I did manage to squeak oh. one in the lottery, but it's pointless if I can't get a bus to work. So. Yeah, I guess there's that. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so um, bonus damage has been taken. We're gonna okay. no, sorry, it's just Sarah's regular two. shot. So no bonus shot for Justero. I'd like Har to harpoon triggered, so you're checking for Justero's bonus thing because right. harpoon triggers right away. You actually deal the damage card from harpoon before you continue on the step in the timing chart. Uh, correct. When it does activate, yes, you have to do it immediately. Yep. So yep. you check for Justero's pilot ability immediately, no attack, and then you continue on. You know what I like about Justero is not really, well, sorry, not just his ability, but the fact that he's pilot skill four. And some people look at that and they're like, oh. Oh, come on, we're in the we're in the age of aces here. Why bring a pilot skill four ship? Look at the cost. Oh, he's got this neat little ability. A lot of people underestimate him, but when you look at the sequence of events, Captain Justero, who can potentially shoot twice per turn, uh, at pilot skill four, he's at that further end of the spectrum where in the shooting phase where he can choose to mop up what you need to be what you need to have taken care of. And he's effective. That that K well, yeah, fighter is no slouch. He has low PS4, but he takes Deadeye, and it doesn't matter. That's right. 
That's right. So with dead eye and, and also like look down the road with contraband cybernetics. Absolutely. So Lucas is deciding about whether or not uh, Z95 number four wants to use a tracer missile or just take a regular shot at Justero, who he does have in range. It doesn't look like it doesn't look like Z5 or two will have range on Justero. Lucas is wondering if he wants to put. He is going for it. Wonderful. Okay, so we've got the guidance oh, chips okay. shot coming there. Okay. Okay. So Not the uh, it hits, and we're going to see who else gets a target lock. Yep, number two is going to grab it. Love it. And we know that number five is out. So just four and two will get the target lock on Justero for the following turn. Beautiful. Now, let's not underestimate what Lucas has done here with five pilot skill two ships. He's obviously a guy who's not afraid of aces, and he doesn't mind owning, if you will, the bottom of the, uh, of the shooting phase. He really can decide where he wants to go with those shots and where he wants to be next turn because he's going to know what's damaged, and he'll be able to react fairly quick. So... Okay, so our red number four has spent his tracer missile. Um, oh. Oh. Ow. Yeah. That's the second time that uh, that Lucas has taken advantage of that zero-point EPT. Holy, look at this coming through. Oh. Yeah, we pain. got some, some hot fire getting rolled on Nim there. Oh, my goodness. Great shot. Our marshal for the shot. day, Devin Monkhouse. How you doing, sir? Yeah, good round. Everybody gets signed up for the uh, the prizes to get mailed out for. We're working on it. We're about halfway through. Sweet. Well, nice. Let's do a 45-minute call. I beg your pardon? Let's do 45 minutes. You're about to call for 45 minutes. Good. That's right. Yeah. And so, noting that we are sitting at, you know, almost 45 minutes left in this match, I don't know about you, Tim, but the last 20 minutes of this match is just going to be fireball after fireball if they make and it a that frenzy. Far. Yeah. Okay, so that last shot that we had, the four dice, that was number two shooting its harpoon missile. Understood. That was my mistake. Sorry about that. So Justero is hurting and harpooned. Look at I don't know, one health. Fringer's going to try and finish him off right here. And Fringer's at half health, so. We're looking Ooh, at uh, 21 okay. to 0 for so Tristan. So Fringer can, or oh. Justero could evade. Mangler cannon double crit. So we've got uh, Justero rolling rock. three dice with the rock. And looks like he's living. Hmm. Okay, so we go. excellent turn there. Very interesting. Let's see what this comes up with. Nice, nice. Wow. There's just so many moving parts here. I don't even know how to keep up. Number two and four can really close in around Justero here, too. Really interesting comment from the chat that we just got, uh, Scott. We had a G-roll comment in that he felt like... Um, or Jelly Roll. Jelly Roll, yeah. sorry, yeah. Jelly Roll felt like uh, community-based support and and really cool design alt arts, and, and basically the community makes up for um, problems or, or, or support issues from FFG themselves. And it's a really interesting comment, Jelly Roll, because I, on one hand, I agree with you that you know community and and, and, and community-based support is is a great way to promote events and have great experience at them. But I'm in marketing myself, and some of the decisions get that get made um, from them, and some of the things that that end up right. affecting their end consumers, right. make me wonder what sort of decision-making process has happened. I'd love to have a conversation one day with the marketing director if, from, and, and from honest, either FFG or Asmodee and, yeah. and just and, and pick their brain and be like, either you're way ahead of me or, or other marketing guys in, in your understanding of how to go to market with this kind of thing or... Yeah, are they or, behind or are they too far ahead exactly, actually? Right? Where are they on this? So, yeah. no, that, that's, just, that's true. And uh, as you travel across uh, Canada and the States and you play X-Wing or you watch it being streamed, you will notice more and more uh, X-Wing clubs or squadrons or club squadron uh, groups they are putting out an awful lot of their own material. They're finding people who can 3D print. They're finding, uh, you know, cottage industry guys and gals who don't mind printing off uh, and laser etching the templates. Uh, people are getting involved with design. Uh, pretty much everywhere you go these days, if you run into uh, an X-Wing squadron that's got, I don't know, eight to 12 people, 
uh, they've got something going on. They've got some templates, uh, T-shirts, whatnot. So, no, I agree with you, Jelly it's, Roll. It's great to I, see. It, I, I think that I'm not excusing them either, and and I totally agree with you that community has made it such a much more long-term, sustainable, uh, fun game to play. Because you're right, it's the people you're playing with that make it awesome. And that goes to the root. That's what uh, X-Wing has really been about. No matter if you're playing at your local game store, just casual and fun, or you're coming to a competitive event, it is about the community. No matter where you yeah, go. Yeah, and you just gotta you gotta have it in mind policy. about you gotta have it in mind about expectations. And I think that's a great theme for for our episode today. So Scott and I wanted to talk about thematically. Um, both of us are fathers, and we wanted to talk about gaming with our kids. That's right. And, and getting kids into gaming in general, like some some philosophies and stuff like that. So, I mean, like, I know that I worked at an EB Games for a while, and one piece of advice I always used to give parents is, uh, you know, get your kid to play a Legend of Zelda game. There you go. Because, yeah. you know, problem solving, creative thinking, determination are, are great little skills and stuff you can take out. Like, take X-Wing, for example. Spatial reasoning, probability management, Spatial management. risk management, yep. um, geometry, like, you name it. Not to mention there's the chess element of trying to like, you know, poker face stuff. Talk to me about your experiences gaming with your son and, and some of the feedback, you know, he as a kid with his friends have had that kind of thing. Go ahead. It, it's been a great journey, actually. Uh, uh, you know, since he was small, he's been interested in any type of gaming. And, and while he was growing up, he was exposed to a lot of historical gaming. And I was playing a lot of uh, Warhammer Fantasy back then. Uh, so he got to experience, uh, you know, say, tabletop Vietnam War gaming. He got to uh, do some red coats. Uh, he also did some uh, Victorian science fiction. We've got a series of friends who actually, who this weekend are at Hot Lead in Stratford, Ontario. I think this is their 25th year running Hot Lead there. So he saw a lot of historical gaming. But then when it came to sci-fi, uh, that you know, X-Wing came onto the scene and it was something he could get into really fast because all the other hobbies did have that building and painting element to it and terrain. We only needed a three by three space and that was also very attractive to his friends. And they would, walk, they would come over or they would call him up and say, hey, can your dad run some X-Wing for us? Uh, so, yeah, he can. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Uh, so now Sam is, uh, well, he's still under 16, but here's a, here's a guy who goes to tournaments and, uh, you know, he loves casual games too. Right now he's definitely loving the entire competitive scene uh, because of the community. Sure, he likes to win games, but the amount of people he knows across this province and that know him for just the enthusiasm and love of the game, it's uh, it's off the charts. It's more than I could hope for, for him to enjoy it this much. Well, what I learned the most from, from coming to tabletop gaming from video gaming is how to lose. I don't lose well. I, I'm a little bit salty are, when I You lose. are salty, are you? I've never table flipped yet. Oh. I'm happy to say, but well, I don't I'll lose keep an eye well. on you tomorrow. <laughs> we'll see. And, and, I'm, and I've learned how to, how to take it like a man, how to you know, do that kind of stuff. So yeah. I re we'll look forward to continuing this conversation yeah. about uh, gaming. Let's get back into the activation phase here. Absolutely. Here we Looks go. Looks like Crosby's almost ready to go. He's going to activate number three first, I reckon. Ooh, he's not even totally sure about his dials. Yeah, yep, he's going to change this one. Mm, I think he might have uh, changing it from a K turn to a turn. That Fringer dial looks like it's seen a couple of games, eh? Kind of. Lucas has had a game or two with his on Fringers. Yeah. Oh, there, we he, go. there was one game where he played Alan Fung, and Alan danced his aces around something similar, except there was a stress bot Y Wing in there as well. Oh. And it was such a game to watch. I think that's also on VWTV Live in the archives somewhere. As Travis yawns. Long days for you already, pretty bad. It's been a long day for our trusty uh, producers at VWTV Live. A long month, huh? <laughs> they have done an absolute job. Just as a reminder to everybody, this is Canadian Nationals. They are simultaneously streaming the L5R and the X-Wing action from their channels. And uh, if you are if you're got two screens or a screen that's big enough, uh, feel free to tune into both. Luke is Look trying to this. close here the net go. here with yeah. one forwards to victory. Yeah. Uh, Going to try and maintain range two on somebody. Uh, I wonder if he's going to put that fringer right up and start some blocking. I don't think Why that fringer not? can go straight, man. Well, he could, he could probably pull off a nice too soft, a two bank to starboard there to his right. Just park it right there and see what happens. Such a great move from Lucas because, of course, the Z95s Look only have two banks that are green, not one bank right. that are green. But that 3K turn, yeah. you got to love it. 
And that two bank green the following turn is going to put him for a perfect harpoon yeah. missile follow-up shot. He's got that whole lane right down those rocks from, if you will, southeast to northwest. Oh, so. just masterful. Oh, it's a three. Yeah, yeah. here we go. Here's the Park blocking. it right where he needs it to be. Fly past him, and you've got a mangler cannon at range one or two to light up your day. You know, he could barrel roll right and catch Nim for a kill shot, too. Jesus. Look at that. Nim's trajectory simulator will trigger Justero here as long as mm. Justero doesn't bump. If Justero bumps, he's in big trouble. I wonder what Tristan did here. I wonder if actually, uh, no, nah, Tristan would not have uh, K-turned. No, forget it. Strike that from the record. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Control, alt, delete, backspace. Yeah, those, with those Zeds moving in at one. What's a, I'm trying to remember an old 80s video game where the ships just moved. Of course, you know, we're talking, what, 8, 16-bit. They moved blurps across the screen. That's almost what the Zeds are doing right now. They're just blurps coming at you very slowly, blurp, inevitably. Blurp, 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 blurp. Cue the Jaws music, you know? So. Cue the 8-bit music. <laughs> yeah. Here we go. So if a ship gets destroyed because we're around the corner from St. Patrick's Day, does, uh, does the producer put up a nice explosion with shamrocks coming out of it? Is there a nice little graphic you guys have put together for this? Look, or I gotta, a little I gotta bit of fancy pants? Travis or? has invested, like... <laughs> I'm not like saying it's not hundreds enough. Hundreds <laughs> of hours into this program. Now I'm asking overlay. for glittery shamrocks. And okay. I came to him like two weeks ago. I was like, can you make me a Luck of the Irish uh, uh, EPT card? For and how did he look at you? Yeah. He looked at me like, I'm going to choke you, <laughs> and then I'm going to bury your body. There we go. Well, well you live to tell the tale. <laughs> As a reminder to all of our viewers, after much, much finagling and begging on the parts of the prototype Toronto League, our good friends of VWTV Live have finally instituted themselves a Patreon page. Nice. And uh, if you like our content and if you'd like uh, to continue to see it, feel free to go over there and support them and show your love. And they do this all out of the love of their heart. They do. They've invested yep. a lot of time and money, and uh, and we're very happy for them because it just gets us let's to uh, showcase some great content from Canada. And, you know, we've got people from all over different gaming communities in Canada here today. Uh, they came into Toronto downtown to the Sheridan Center across yep. the street from our, uh, our our city hall. So it's just going to be a great game, or sorry, a great day, I should say. I love the barrel roll. The barrel roll here is just Never get magic. bored of it. Well, I took a list of three fringers to uh, a London tournament one time, and uh, you know, it was just a blast to play. You know, you're barrel rolling all over the place and blocking your opponent. You can go pretty much anywhere around those rocks. You can park on them if you want to, if you just want to be silly about it. Uh, it is a fun list, and also the opportunity to paint up three fringers. Oh, we got a three bank from uh, Justero, right? So just, Look at that. Justero's going YOLO, Whoa. folks. Oh, he's not. Uh, so what do we have here? We've got him facing down number four, Bandit. So number four, Bandit, he's full, healthy, and alive. So Justero must be just going in for that hammer strike. But if he uh, if he gets two shots on four for whatever reason, mm. um, that's very different. So that, I uh, wonder, wonder if that really telegraphs what's happening with Nim here. Nim banking to the right. Well, when and I say when I say YOLO, you got to imagine Aragorn outside of the gates oh, yeah. of Mordor, just when when the door opens and, and the army's there, That's and he great. looks back at uh, at Gandalf and goes for Frodo. Just imagine he says YOLO. Absolutely. Turns around and just goes, "Yep, let's do this." Yeah, I'm dead anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Take one for the team, just That's it, man. Take one for the team. Give yeah. Frodo time. <laughs> Still a great scene. Never get bored of that movie. Tristan deciding which one of his PS10s he wants to activate first. Must have some interesting shenanigans going on. Well, I think you and I can agree that Nim's going to fire off that bomb with the trajectory simulator. And uh, after that, my, my opinion, he's going to peel off. Uh, you're right. Off. He's revealed a two bank there. And two so Nim is right. shooting down that uh, thermal detonator. Sorry, Tim. And uh, that detonator, when it goes off at the end of the activation phase, one damage to each ship within range one and taking a stress token as well. So that could affect the, the Fringer adversely. Uh, or, you know, the Fringer may have to keep, uh, keep that stress token next turn. Uh, it's probably, you know, might have to do a white maneuver. And uh, no barrel the best rolls. dial in the game and everything's white. Oh, on the it's dial. just incredible. Just incredible. A white hard on a large base ship like that. Oh, white hard turn, I mean. The only just, thing better would be a green one hard turn. Bloody jump master. <laughs> Biston doesn't give a doesn't make your turns green, do they? Does no, he, does he do does that too? He's pretty ability. dirty. But dirty, dirty Biston. So, <laughs> dirty Biston. So what do we have here? So, 
Jags bus says Justero gets to shoot and deal a damage to each Zed if he dies. Interesting. Thanks very much for your compliment there, Pilosis. Uh, Travis and Victor put a lot of work into the stream. They're happy for your feedback. I wonder what Nim's doing here. Is he taking a target lock or somebody? Well, or Nim he did just, peel off. So. Yes, he's going to take a harpoon target lock on. Yeah, here we go. He's going to target lock that same Z and try and delete it. So Tristan's wanting to break open his Ooh. right flank and, and run through. Oh, Tarani's coming here for the go. party as well. Here we go. Uh, well, looks like a bullseye, uh, bullseye shot on number five Zed. So there'll be some effectiveness there to help preserve Nim. Who knows? Number five is down to one shield, two hull. Yeah. So, yeah, Tristan definitely has to start uh, laying down some, some some thumps on these guys. And it's uh, crazy how the Kamigula fighter can shoot its missile and still activate its bullseye firing on somebody else. Indeed. Pretty good synergy here. You don't really see it until you're at range two. <laughs> I just heard the title, Mike Lucas, going, there's going to be a lot of explosions this yeah, turn, explosions, I feel. Explosions, explosions. Devin Monkhouse over here showing us his dance moves. Is this your Irish jig? Is that what that is? Oh, nope. somebody yelled for judge. Irish. Okay. <laughs> so Devin is judging today. Devin he's is the head marshal today. Head yes. marshal, okay. Well, or do you feel judged by Devin? I mean, there's, Devin, whichever, does yeah. he judge you regularly? <laughs> we've got... Uh, we've got Graham uh, Schofield, who's our uh, TO, and Devin, who's our head judge. A couple of other helpful judges around here. Graham doing a great job as well, as always. He was uh, our TO for uh, Toronto Regionals. Uh, carries the day, keeps everything uh, organized and aligned. Seems to pass you some pretty good information in a timely fashion. Oh, we have some shooting here. He does. Okay, so, so we had the bomb's one. exploding. All right. Going to take damage Not from that. There we go. Shame it doesn't trigger just arrow, but we're going to see it. Ray's triggering a start of combat. Right. And it's time for stuff to go boom. Wow. I bet Winner. you Lucas was hoping next turn to get off that rigged cargo shoot if he could uh, bank to his left, drop that in front of Nim and Tarani. But, yeah. but oh well. <laughs> we're going to find out in yeah. a second here. That is one dead Z95. I don't think I've ever felt more bad for a Z95. Nim's going to fire a harpoon missile at number four. Nim is now out of harpoon missiles. Yeah. And Z95 number two at the top of the screen, full health. What do we have here? No, not too shabby. Oh, no, we only have the two. Okay. Spend the target lock to reroll two dice. There we go. Guidance chips for wow. three. And number four mm, I see rolls money, two natties. Unreal. Really? Number four loses a shield and is harpooned. Wow. Look at that. Tarani's going to have to fire his harpoon and trigger it for Justero's bonus shot to kill that Z. Unreal. And Tarani... Uh, what's that? Z7? Z7? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's confusing a little bit because uh, Lucas is, uh, oh, oh, that's one dead Z. And let's not forget that Tarani without harpoon uh, missiles is no slouch either. Look at those primaries, right? So unfortunately, because the Z95 dies, mm. it's going to do a splash damage with the harpoon condition. Yeah. <clears throat> So Tarani shoots and kills number two. Is that within range one of just arrow? Yeah, so as a reminder to our viewers, because Tarani one-shotted the Z, the attack is concluded before the harpoon condition is applied, and it doesn't trigger when you one-shot on a harpoon. Mm, that's right. Okay, so just arrow is, right. is... Oh, here we go. Rack him, back him, and stack him. That should kill him. That will, of course, self-kill just arrow, because the harpoon condition will trigger. Well, uh, he wasn't going to sit there and yeah. take it, so. And we have a one. Justero not getting to trigger his uh, bonus shot here because uh, Z95 is Z95 five is out of arc. Number five takes the splash damage as well. And they're just working out the sequence, right? Just arrow's dead as well. Yeah. I beg your pardon? 
We have here. Is that a direct hit? It does, yes. So go splash damage. Couldn't quite see. Wow. So by killing Z90, Z95 4 here, mm -hmm. we're simultaneously triggering two harpoons. That's right. Because 4 dies, yep. then Justero dies and triggers his harpoon, and then more splash that. damage. Yep. So 5 is coming out of this with no shields. Nim's taking a shield damage. And the chain gang continues. Whoa, have you ever played Super Smash Brothers? <laughs> yeah. This reminds me of like dropping a, 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 a POW cube into no the middle kidding. of a just cur. No kidding. Just daisy chains all the way through. Everybody gets a piece all to it. All right, everybody in the yeah. chat needs to put the best uh, hashtag to describe <laughs> what the heck just happened. Mine is hashtag kerfuffle. I don't know what just <laughs> going on here. Now you wish you had that, uh, that uh, graphic with the, uh, the shamrocks blowing up ships. There we go. That is just a butt ton of damage. I love it. Just taking a look here at the YouTube stream. Yes, ESPN of X-Wing. There we go, Jacob. All right, good call. I like that. <laughs> this is the ESPN of X-Wing. I agree wholeheartedly. Very, very high BTTV, praise. Thank you indeed, guys. High grade, high quality. Okay, so Lucas is going to get his return shots here. He's lost two ships. We figured that was going to happen. Managed to maintain just over half health on the Fringer to do it. But yeah, he's still up against a completely healthy uh, Nim and uh, Tarani, so. <laughs> okay, Game and Damon, I got you. Hashtag <laughs> farting, farting yeah. elevator. Yeah, <laughs> I love yep, it. Collateral damage. Uh, harpoon Doom, I love it. Nuke oh, them all, the let best. the force sort them out. You yeah. guys are the best. <laughs> that was just simultaneous cascading harpoon nonsense. I yeah. love this game. Yeah. So, oh, oh, oh. Z95 rolling hot fire. He's not taking it laying down. Lucas has rolled more and more natties. That Beautiful. is that zero point EPT uh, coming into effect once again, folks. It's a very simple cost. Every ship in the game can take it. And it's just, uh, it's just the best. It's only for this weekend, of course, but you know. Gotta love it. So that was uh, number five Zed firing on Nim. I didn't quite get to see the arc. Did you catch that, Tim? No, I didn't get to see it. But I, it may make sense it's Nim, but... Yeah. What are they working out here? Yeah. I think it was two hits and a crit. Pretty sure it was Nim. All right, folks, there was a lot happening in that turn, so we're just going to ask our, uh, our good man, Sumit, um, to run over and, uh, and double check all the damage. Shabit, of course, is going to be hosting you, Scott, in the next round. Great. I'm going to uh, I'm going to do my rounding around the room and try and figure out some stuff. So yeah, rest you, that melodious voice of yours. My, my sultry barrel tone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was uh, that was some pretty epic action. While I'm here, I just wanted to make a couple of shout outs to uh, the London Squadron. So out there. Uh, you guys are called the Ewok Squadron. Yeah, now, Ewok aren't you? Squadron. London Ewok Squadron. So Ewoks go strong. And uh, also to Rose Squadron, that's uh, in Windsor, Ontario. Uh, Rose Those boys City. made a great showing in Michigan. Oh, the, uh, did they ever, weekend, eh? Right? Did they ever. And they, uh, a bunch of them came up to regionals, too, in, uh, for Toronto there, first week of January. So, you know, we usually see Solon and Andrew out there as well. Uh, so yeah, those two squadrons going strong. Uh, so you look at from Windsor, Ontario, all the way to Ottawa, and then circle up over to Timmins. You've got squadrons all along. Black, Fr Black Fly Squadron up in Muskoka. Those guys are great. There's squadrons everywhere. If you're ever wondering, you know how to, you know, if you're just trying to get into the game and you'd like to meet up with a bunch of a bunch of people, uh, get on Facebook groups. You know, Star Wars Ontario. Uh, you'll find all these other groups listed as subgroups or attached. And in your experience, Scott, like meeting some of these other squadrons and things like that from all over Ontario, how many uh, instances have you seen with uh, dads showing up with their, their kids? I mean, like I know there's you and Sam. Mm -hmm. Mike mm -hmm. Brzezinski's here with his son. Oh, excellent. Uh, sorry, excellent. Mike Brzezinski's here with his dad, Tony, from oh, St. Catharines. Okay. Yeah. And, yeah. and we've seen um, last weekend it was great. Uh, one of the players in Michigan brought uh, his daughter out. I think her name was Izzy or something like that. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and, I did um, see that. Oh, you did, eh, Sumit? You ended up yeah. playing her, Sumit. 
Oh, you played the dad. Okay, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's great seeing them come out in pairs, uh, dads and sons, dads and daughters. Haven't seen any mums and daughters yet, but uh, I'm sure. saw some mums waiting, yeah. like, like watching, just yeah. like they would be at like dance class or something. And then they were thoroughly impressed, they were they? They were thoroughly just, reading magazines. Yeah. Oh, they weren't at the table cheering? <laughs> okay. They weren't calling the shots, were they? But No, it could happen. It could happen. But uh, every tournament we go to, uh, there's always a father-son or uh, you know father-daughter combo every time we go. Haven't missed one yet. As a matter of fact, in London, you know, we've got uh, uh, a couple of uh, father-son teams that come out and, uh, you know, one, one joins and the other one joins. That's how it usually flows. And we're more than happy to see that. So It's tough because sometimes a kid will love doing it and then, go. you know, his dad wants to do it, but he just, it's hard to get his friends into it unless the friends understand the game. You know? That's right. All right, well, let's get back to the action here. we got activation phase starting. Uh, Z95-4 looking to try and block yeah, him, I definitely. guess. Definitely. Definitely. I'll try and block that Talon roll, maybe, or even better, catch Nim yeah. in that Talon roll for a range one. Yeah. Leisurely two bank, clear that stress, get, get a focus going. Tristan calling from the table. His uh, hashtag submission for the uh, the kerfuffle last term was hashtag Death Blossom. <laughs> so Death Blossom is from the Last Starfighter. It's a reference right. to the Last Starfighter, which was the very first movie yep. ever that had CG graphics in it. I saw that in the drive-in theater. Oh yeah, back man. in the day. Yep. That was that was, yeah, that. was back for people who actually had like rotary phones and stuff like that. And you had to walk up and get your uh, food from the concession stand. Yeah, and you hated and people that had a zero in their phone number for and rotary phones. They had that 800-pound cast iron speaker hanging off your glass window. The cord was attached to the wall, like 60 feet long and like all floppy. Boy, we could go on, but might might lose our younger listeners here. Keep going. We are going to lose our younger <laughs> listeners, absolutely. Um, okay, so we got the Fringer doing a, a, a three bank over the rock, try and get him uh, back in the game here. No damage. Mm. Very good roll. Okay, so no action, no stress clear, but he's got a shot. Ray with a mangler cannon. Not bad. So, do you see any uh, focus tokens on Ray over there? Oh, he does. He's got two focus tokens on Ray that he can allocate. Uh, Tristan is doing the talent. Nice. Very well called by Robert Crosby. Nice. It's win-win. Either he blocks him and Nim is stressed where he is, or it lands and Crosby gets a range one. Let's see. So I wonder if that means uh, Tarani is doing just a one soft bank to starboard to her right. I wonder. No. Yep, he's in there. He's in there. It's good. Look at that. Never underestimate those talent rolls. Tristan's saying he's happy with that. No need to put the ship back in. Uh, confident he's got arc, I would agree. Yeah. Going to stress up Nim, put the Z back, and we're going to move on to Tarani. And Tarani maintained arc as well, laughing. Otherwise, if he bailed, soft one. Yeah, he's going to try and delete another Z. Match is already heavily point favored towards nope. Tristan. Tristan's taken out half of... Um, Lucas's list at this point. Yeah, we have a 50 to 27 match Sorry, right now. Sorry, no, he's only Tristan. got a quarter of, uh, of Lucas's list. Lucas, on the other hand, no, the the points are the points are reversed. Yeah, sorry, folks. So the score here? should be 50 to 27 for uh, <laughs> for Tristan. Okay. Well, Captain Justero. Captain Justero has 27 points. 27. So Lucas blew up Justero, so Lucas has 27 points right now. Right, but Tristan's yeah. only destroyed 13, 29. Half of the Fringer, though, and right? Half of the Fringer. Yeah, can, 21 points. Math. 21 points. I can do math, folks. The maths is good. Listen, it's St. Patrick's Day weekend, and the green beer flows like the rivers you know, of Ireland. I think there's a disclaimer there in the St. Patrick's Clause that math is absolutely not required on St. Patrick's weekend. Math is what I bloody weekend. well said it is. That's right, that's right. If you can still see... Then you don't need the math. Nah. Ah, there you go. C straight. Oh, Tarani deleting the Z95 there. That's right. That's right. So we might have a range three. Okay, we'll have a range three shot from the Fringer on Tarani. Oh, I guess he's going after. Uh, oh, is that Tristan's range? Tristan is measuring to the Fringer. Here we go. Hmm. This is going to be interesting to see if Tristan launches a bomb with trajectory simulator next term and peels off. Nim's range three shot with primaries, just two hits. Sure, why not? Fringer, he's good. Evades cleanly. Yeah. Wow. Again, you know those primaries coming off on Nim's bomber? Yeah, don't worry about that. I mean, when they first came out, people were flying uh, three and four of those bombers. 
uh, with uh, three attack dice each. Absolutely nothing to sneeze at. Thanks for showing in, uh, Royal Villain. Oh, two shields off of Tarani there. Long bomb from the Z, number three, who, of course, still has a harpoon missile and could probably unleash its fury on mm. either Nim or Tarani next turn. You know, if you could take four of those Skurg bombers, each one just with carrying, you know, toting its primaries and an auto blaster turret, and go up against four Wookiees, I wonder oh. what that match would look like. Yeah, there we go. Look what I did. So that's my fault. <laughs> Pelosis, yes, uh, absolutely. Lucas has definitely been rolling hot very much so this game. He's yeah. utilizing a, a zero point EBT called the Luck of the Irish. It's uh, There we go. Well, maybe the green dice will be our friends this weekend then, you know? And green the dice, green dice don't oh. let you down. You could always bash them to death with a they, hammer. Uh, they betray me every time. They're dirty, dirty dice. Don't trust green dice. <laughs> that's right, never. <laughs> Nothing. You know, Looks like Tarani's taking some more here. Crit going through here on Tarani. It's a direct hit on Tarani. Wow. I, uh, I was playing. For some reason, that reminded me of a game. Oh, direct hit. There we go. There we go. So I was just thinking back about three weeks ago. I was playing one of our league games in London, and uh, I had a uh, one of my T70s was being shot at at long range. Three defense dice, naked dice and I actually yelled out save me Duncan Howard and I rolled natties <laughs> it actually worked and I had a room full of people to witness it so. save me Tom Cruise <laughs> something about the Howards are coming here tomorrow or something like that I uh, should hope they're coming one of them yeah. owes me a bloody mat driving up uh, I think they're not driving up they're riding up on Tauntauns aren't they they're doing it true Canadian style aren't they I think they're actually just borrowing a few tanks from the American military. Oh, is that what they're doing? They're so, they're so hell-bent on steamrolling us this week. There weekend. we go. Yeah, I think they're pretty pumped for it. But we'll see how that works out for them. Okay, well, let's just do a quick summary. Um, just wanted to re-mention about VWTV Live today, folks. Uh, we're casting live from the Sheridan Center, downtown Toronto. Uh, there's simultaneous streams live on YouTube or Twitch. And, yeah, they're, um, you can go all over afterwards. Uh, if you're watching the stream and you enjoy the content, make sure you navigate over to their social media pages like subscribe and share and yeah tell your friends this is uh, the best place to get uh, canadian x-wing it not is that the, not, with, not that the x-wing junkies who are watching are <laughs> not also good but <laughs> let's good. let's be fair toronto yeah. is downtown canada and the production and the quality of both organizations is outstanding really yeah we're gonna have the x-wing junkies on a little bit later today excellent excellent looking forward to that <laughs> if you don't support VTTV, I will come to your home and fight you. That's what the X, X Wing junkies just chimed in. Loving with. it. Loving it, guys. The little Greedo thumbs up symbol. Here we are. Look at that. So Tristan's list in a pretty good position, but let's not be let's not let's not mistake ourselves here. Yeah. The yeah. Fringer is a turret. You can keep the pressure on from range three mm -hmm. on either of these one agility ships. Mm -hmm. This is exactly the late game that Tristan got into himself last week against Marcel. He's got a big base turret ship there. The Fringer's still harpooned. Anything can happen to that. And We're he's got a one full health Z-95 with a missile. Yeah. If that Z-95 does not die and it gets its harpoon missile off, yeah. it could very easily do some horrible damage to Nim yeah. and shift this game back into uh, Lucas's corner. Yeah, we still, uh, we've still we got just a hair over 15 minutes left. We've got Tristan toting 11 total health and uh, Lucas toting 7 total health. You might think, okay, Tristan's got this wrapped up when at an 11 to 7, but uh, as Tim said, look at the turret, look what it can touch from the Wild Space Fringer right now. The Bandit is lined up, and tyranny has got to come around. So... Really, it's, it's Lucas's call. The next turn is his call to swing that pendulum. Thank you for watching today, Zach M. I'm not who sure that is. But that is well, the Zach Matthews, isn't it? No, it's just Zach M. No, oh, it's not. Oh, it's not the it's real just him. Zach M. Actually, that, that might. Uh, hey, that's not Zach. Isn't that like Swedish? It's, it's more like a. Uh, Zachariah? Yeah, yeah Z Z Zeke. Maybe it's Zeke. Zeke. It is know. Zeke. Yeah. Zeke M. Okay, T Z M. Cool. Hmm. Hmm. What does that mean? Interestingly enough, we're going into the late game here, and it's exactly the way both players said that they were interested in having the game look like it. They both yeah, let's wanted. Go back to the they both wanted a Z two Z 95s deleted on one turn of combat. That's right. Yep. Lucas wanted to go into the late game with hopefully one or two full health. Z's against one or two damaged one agility ships with the Fringer. I think the Fringer's more damaged than he was ready for, but I don't really see that one player has a massive advantage here. Tarani has to bail and reload. 
Nims out of harpoon missiles. He's got one bomb left. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and then he's just a, a B-wing, basically. Well, if Lucas is fine. B-wing, okay, sure, good, good. I was going to say, Lucas is fine if he doesn't put himself in that corner. But uh, Tristan, uh, in my in my opinion, he's got to come firing in with Nim on fire, and he's got to put some serious smack down on that fringer right now because that fringer is about to get away from him and just kite around. So maximum speed on the Skurg bomber? Is it three or four? What's his straight? The Skurg? Yeah, four. four. Okay, so it he has a five straight, but it's red. Ah, I wonder. Well, he's already stressed, so he won't be doing that. Mm. And uh, we got a Kimogila, so a, a flying bread box that did a K turn. That's uh, it is. It's actually the fastest maneuver on its dial. It only does threes mm. unless it's the K turn at four. Okay, so he wants he wants the Z. Here we go. So he's going to take him apart a little bit here, a little bit there. Okay. Well, Nim is definitely uh, mm. trying to go in there and finish this off. Yeah. So you can barrel roll to dodge a harpoon missile. And, oh, no, he can't get the harpoon right. missile because the Z doesn't have a target lock. That's correct, yes. So what we have here, we've got an interesting lineup here with Nim. So we're looking at about a, a range two shot. Nim is at a harpoon missiles. Oh, and he's barrel rolling him back. Oh, I guess he's going to go for the extra agility dice just from primary fire. Get out of, uh, excuse me, from the Z, and then get out of range of the wall space fringer. So he only has to deal with one ship right now. So it's going to be one on one. And let me see, Captain Nim, what he's still got kicking around here? Well, he does uh, does have his, left. yep, and trajectory simulator uh, next turn if he needs it. Uh, extra munitions, he's used both of those. So okay. Great comment from Blue Sea, uh, Blue Sea, Blue Sky. I am assuming that's uh, the Sea to Sky guys out in the West Coast. If not, I'm mistaken. Uh, I thought for sure going into this match well as well that the Z94, the Z95 Swarm would have an advantage. Yeah. But you got to remember, Lucas is such a seasoned formation flyer. He really denied uh, Tristan's ability to keep guns on one target. It was great. And he has kept uh, Tristan to, if you will, that for the most part, that northeastern quadrant of the mat. Tristan's still playing around in there for the most part. Oh, here we go. Harpoon missile from the Z95 on Captain Nim here. Wow. All damage. All day long. Okay, so Nim well, taking a crit here. We got a uh, shield. Hit, hit, and a face up. Oh. Direct hit. Nim's dead. That yell that you might have heard from the other side of the room was the screams of agony, I think, of uh, Tristan and the onlookers. Yeah, At the Tristan's death of got, Captain I mean, Nim. these two players are absolutely top match players. So they got about yeah. five or six. Eight guys who finished their game already watching this game. Even if you, um, uh, <laughs> the chances of pulling a direct crit from a deck are one in three. Well, it's exactly what Lucas needed. No, it's it's seven direct hits into thirty, so it's about one in four and change. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it is. It is. But uh, yeah, I mean, Tristan pulled uh, the one crit that he didn't need, which is just one more example of Lucas using that zero point EPT this uh, in this match here. And here we are with. Uh, Almost uh, 11 minutes left on the clock. Um, we got 11 minutes left on the clock, Tristan. 11 minutes, 11 minutes. 11 minutes left on the clock. And uh, Lucas and Tristan got are calling for a time Tarani's check. has got his work cut out for him here. Him? Oh, I was seeing her. Hmm? I thought, I thought Tarani was a her. Is it oh, a woman? I don't know. I, okay. An alien, uh, whatever. So, a Taraniite uh, has... <laughs> Well, actually, Luke, excuse me, Tristan has an opportunity, again, to come in here at a moderate speed, take out that Zed, mind you, full health, but take out that Zed, um, maybe take an action this turn, uh, to, you know, clear that stress, take an action, reload. I don't think the, uh, the Harpoon missiles are reloaded yet. Hopefully take down that bandit with uh, primaries and move on to, uh, you know, firming up the score a little more, and then we'll have a Tarani versus Fringer final. But Lucas, he is not going to lay back and let that happen. If you no, both it. players are assessing the late game as we speak. I can hear them talking back and forth to each other. They're yeah. both uh, yeah. both counting up, and they've realized they're going into the last 10 minutes of this match, uh, and Lucas winning by so five points. Two hard or one hard? So Tristan oh, has to uh, clear <clears throat> that uh, Z95 and win if he wins on points. So Interesting. Luke is not taking this opportunity to clear Harpoon. He's going to barrel roll, get back into the fight. Um, the Fringer has the math to take Tarani. All right, if he trades the uh, if he trades the Z95 for another damage or two on Tarani, then the Fringer might be able to just do it. Yeah, and it could be dicey, especially if Tarani though gets uh, an extra green die. 
<laughs> gets an extra green die from that from that asteroid. Uh, Lucas is winning though. He's winning by five points, and this match is his, so he can sit and wait a bit. I don't think he has to push it. One shotting a Z95 with your primary weapons not easy. Well, I'm, I'm saying the onus is on Tristan, so yeah, you're right. He's got to come in. He's got to lay the smack down on that Zed, but. It'd be Tristan. really interesting to see if the bullseye firing arcs live here after this shot. That is really interesting. Imagine if he clips just the back base uh, number three, right where the number three icon is sitting on that uh, on that base. That's interesting. Tristan That's interesting. offering uh, opting for the target lock. Mm. Um, Tarani did not reload, so this is a primary shot. Okay. So Six three crits. He needs three crits here, right? I hear a get... die bouncing all over the floor. Oh. We're going to get that oh. back on the table in just a second. Right. Wow. What happened there? Two shields there? off the Z95. Okay. No half points for small ships, so. No, so, sir. No way, so. It's a big debate in the community going back and forth about whether if your ship is 40 points or more. That's right. You should get half health on it, but That's we'll talk right. about that some other time. Regardless of, regardless of base size, but small base size is the focus there. Oh. Two full damage going through on okay. Tarani. That pulls Tarani down to three health. Okay, but that no is crits. Danger stranger territory. All right. Tristan's still in it though. But Lucas, he's yeah, he's in the driver's seat right now. Lucas is gonna be able to get that fringer back into play right now with a three hard. And I'd like to say kudos to Lucas though for not running away. I mean I I know it's part of the game, I get it, but Lucas is still willing to go toe to toe here and that says a lot about somebody who wants to play a fun game. Win or lose, you want to have that fun game. I would agree. You know, I've uh, later in the day on round six, when J uh, Jeff Assyri and I are casting, our theme is going to be a bubble match. Oh yeah. Because it's going to be we're going to be casting a bubble match. Good. And talk about differences. But you're in round two. You run away, really? No. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. We or don't do three. we don't do a lot of the round here. No. I don't know about anywhere else, but and and by the way, you know we're not we're not knocking it. I mean there will be games when you have it's to. It's the run right away. decision. You I have mean, to. Absolutely. There's there's got to be times when it happens. My viewpoint is that hey, I'm looking at a screen, uh, I'm looking at a match on live stream, and it's nice as a viewer. You could be sitting at home with your feet up on the coffee table and having a beverage, and you would like to see one heck of an entertaining game. Thank you very much to the viewers who are uh, asking about the uh, the dice cam. So. Because VTV Live is actually simultaneously streaming two events this weekend, we wanted to try and keep our, our workload as, uh, as manageable as possible. And one of the things to remember too is that with a, with a dice cam, you've got two different camera feeds and it can affect performance. So we just wanted to make sure that our viewership wasn't interrupted and, and do everything we can. So yeah, well, there's no dice tray folks, but that's what you've got um, Scott Ross and myself here for. We got a table mic, we're gonna be able to keep the overlay going and we'll keep you up to date on the action. And for those of you who are watching after these videos get posted on YouTube, uh, yeah, same thing. Yeah, yeah. It's truly a pleasure to be down here with the entire community. We've got people from all over Canada, up from the States. It's just amazing to be able to walk through the room, see some familiar faces, meet some new folks, shake hands, see what's going on in their lives. Oh, what are we doing here with the Zed? We got a soft bank, okay. So I wonder if he was going for uh, a block. Maybe he's thinking Tarania is coming in with a one straight. Hmm. I mean, a one straight from Tarani's not a bad call, right? No, well, I don't know. I can't really see that clearly, but it looks it like he's look skipping like over straight. the Z, going three forward. Oh my! He's gonna try and blow up that fringer. So we're looking at a barrel roll here. Five and a half minutes left. Just a reminder that if your your game is over, please find the iPad. It'll be with me or Shaheen, and make sure that your name is and address are entered into the form so that we can mail you your participation prizes. Nice. Thank you. Nice. Five F and a half minutes left. Yep. FFG stepping up, making sure there's no prizes available at the event today. And everybody still came. Yep. Well, why wouldn't they? Again, it's about the community, not FFG. We buy their products. For most of us, that's where the relationship ends. You got my money, FFG. Thanks for making a great product but I want to go play with my friends now. <laughs> Tarani's spending his target lock on the yep. primaries, trying to finish Definitely. off this fringer here. What do we got? And He's got hit results. double crit there, taking two. Which means harpooned is triggered. And there we are. That Survey will do it said. for the fringer. That harpoon is it. kills him. Yep. 
You know, it's, it's that moment right there, everybody, when it's the swing for the fences theory right there. You have to go for it sometimes. And uh, now Tristan has swung that pendulum back onto his side of the board. 84 to 68 for Tristan. Four and a half minutes left, going into the, into the planning phase. Uh, the Z dial went down fast, so Lucas knows exactly what he wants from this. Tristan, though, almost predictable. Got a rock in front of him, uh, a little bit to his front starboard side. So for Tristan, uh, he could fly over the rock and do a K turn. No, that game, would be a five. This game's over. We know it. So thanks very much, folks, for. Uh we're chiming in. Uh, Lucas and, and Tristan give us an absolutely great match. Just as a reminder to the viewers, uh, we've got round four coming up after this. This is four of six today. Day 1A is doing uh, six rounds of Swiss, followed by day 1B tomorrow. There we go. The VT Double TV Live simultaneous uh, cast is going to be back on tomorrow, hosted by none other than Emily Parker and Aaron Poppenhausen, which is going to be great content. Excellent. Um, round 4 is going to be kicking off around 3.35 in the afternoon, so not very far away. We are going to try and line up another uh, interview. Um, we've got some folks in Manitoba who are keen to get on with us. Excellent. And uh, another gentleman from uh, Nova Scotia a little bit later today. Hopefully nice. the, the stars line we can get everybody on. All right, some blue nosers. Good, yeah, exactly. Good quality folks. And just, uh, yeah, I mean, we haven't picked our round uh, four matchup yet, but we know that you and Sumit are going to be uh, casting together. And I won't spoil any of your stuff, but... We'll see you on a little bit later today. Mike Reverso, how you doing, buddy? <laughs> all the all the big guns out today. Oh yeah, yeah. Imagine what Sunday's going to look like. Holy cow! You Sunday, see, uh, the, the top players we're going to see on Sunday. What oh, yeah. what did they call it before? Murderers Row? Is that Murderers what they were called? Murderers Row. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's going to just be brutal. Well, Fung's playing tomorrow. Yeah. Z's playing tomorrow. Yeah. Howard's are playing tomorrow. Kelvin's playing tomorrow. You're playing tomorrow. You I'm didn't. You were I'm no slouch at regionals uh, uh, in Michigan. Shemit's playing. It's oh, here we go. Good times. Oh. I think the Z is reaching. I think Tristan's just taking off at this point, eh? Yeah. Tristan's just gonna try and take a, a long way around here. Take that 84 points and go. Yeah. <laughs> I respect that. I do. Why wouldn't you? Well, he wants to K turn, but he's got to make sure it's a positive engagement, right? No sense in giving away Tarani here. Yeah. I want to get this game locked up, folks. Yeah. This is a premier event. We want to make sure that you maintain MOV, and worse, don't give away a game when you don't have to, right? And also, when you know Lucas running around with two hull, Tristan running around with three hull, they really don't want to face each other. There's no game of chicken that's going to happen in the next two minutes. What do we have here? Well, sure, the Zed still has target lock. Uh, it's not going to work out so hot. Probably do it too hard here. And uh, Tarani probably still take off. You know, maybe a two soft. Oh, a three hard. Ah, well, Lucas knows how to get that net cast. That's for sure. Wonder how much he'd pay right now for a vectored thrusters. Just oh, I know. To get around that. <laughs> if oh, I love the move, though, because he's going to get to take a pot shot on Tarani, right? Yeah, that's interesting. Look at this. Maybe not. Uh, how much Might room do we have there? Can Tarani fit in a barrel Ooh, roll? That's mm. close. If not, then uh, Lucas might just uh, reach out and touch someone right now. Great got? question from no. Matthew Abdi, Abdi on uh, YouTube. Is this all of Canada? No. Canada consists of more than two people. We don't have just as many people as the United States, but um, we, uh, we, we do have a few. Oh, the Canadian Nationals oh. are being hosted in Toronto, which is range. like 3,000 kilometers away from the West Coast. So That's we don't right. always get everybody. That's but we have representatives from all across Canada here today. It's true. That's right. And the U.S. However, you do you do refer to Toronto as downtown Canada. It is I'm downtown pretty sure Canada. you can. <laughs> yes, definitely. That was a, an affectionate nickname given to us by our friends to the south. There we go. There we go. <laughs> so 30 seconds left. Can they get uh, Dallas down or did they call it? They're looking at the board over there. Oh, great, great Lucas comment is from, spinning uh, a dial. from Triton 7305 here. Alan Fung isn't actually all of Canada. His hair his is hair all is. of Canada. Yes, yeah. his hair is. It we, represents everything that is best about our country. We'd like, yeah, if we could put it on a flag. If, you could, if you could put Alan Fung's hair on a flag, I would put it on go. a flag. There we go. 100%. Absolutely. Right next yeah. to the Maple Leaf. New uh, PTL logo coming up. <laughs> <laughs> 
great match from both our players here, folks. Reminder, tune back in at 3.35. There and, we go. Uh, Time is up. Just a reminder, if you have not entered your name and address into the iPad, please come and find us. So I'm going to just head out to the judge's booth. I'll, uh, we can probably take it to break as soon as these guys finish their planning phase. I'm They've looking at one. Yep, they already set their dollar. They are doing it. Here we go. I think Tristan's going to do the gentlemanly thing here and face Tarani for the last round. I'm hoping that's right. That's right. You know, the first tournament I ever went to. The, oh. the first tournament I ever went to, competitive tournament, um, in the same day I uh, faced uh, Tristan. And then Alan Fung. Oh God! That was that was quite the boot camp for That's me. That's a fun day. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. Those eight, hey, but that we uh, we had some pretty tough lists. We battled it out, and uh, sure. Uh, this is fine. This is totally look fine. At this. Don't know if that barrel roll left is fit. Tristan might just have to focus here and pray for the dice god. He came down to one ship left. On one side, both those games. So nail biters and, are the best types of finishes. Hey, and we've been friends since, right? So can't discount that. And here we that are. Looks unobstructed, range three, Z95, no mods. Oh my goodness! You know, if he was shooting at Whisper, he'd kill her. You yeah, know that last it's, round, the Whisper long, play long. would just blank right out, right? That's how so. It Jelly Roll, Alan Fung rolled me at my first regional. Everybody clinch! Here we go! Oh, it's a crit! Oh! It's so major explosion direct hit is a mathematical probability, a possibility. What do we got there? One crit. Oh, oh. heartbreak. Oh, Tristan clings to the green dice. Singleton claims it. Excellent, Excellent. match. We'll see you shortly, What a folks. couple of gentlemen.